Whether you operate one forklift or thousands, one location or hundreds, the new My Toyota customer portal can help you optimize your operation and material handling equipment. This one-stop, free-to-use platform is designed to help you take control of your information and make smarter decisions, all at the touch of a button. Register and access your data today at my.toyotaforklift.com. That's my.toyotaforklift.com. My name is Michael Pytel, and I'm with Fulfilled, supporting the New Warehouse podcast. And my top safety tip is keep it clean. Keep it clean in terms of debris, putting things away, making sure your warehouse is tip-top shape, preventing accidents. Fulfillment demand continues to skyrocket and outpace available labor. To keep up, warehouse operators are turning to flexible fulfillment solutions like Six River Systems. Utilizing Six River Systems' award-winning combination of collaborative robots, artificial intelligence, and operational expertise will make your associates in wall-to-wall fulfillment workflow more efficient. No new infrastructure, no change to warehouse layout, easy to deploy and scale, easy to train and retain associates, all at half the cost of traditional automation. Want to take your fulfillment operation to the next level go to www.sixriver.com to learn more that's www.sixriver.com to learn more the new warehouse podcast hosted by kevin lawton is your source for insights and ideas from the distribution transportation and logistics industry A new episode every Monday morning brings you the latest from industry experts and thought leaders. And now, here's Kevin. Hey, it's Kevin Lawton with the New Warehouse Podcast, bringing you a new episode today. On today's episode, I am joined by Michael Pytel. He is the co-founder and chief technology officer at Fulfilled. And Fulfilled is a cloud-based WMS system, utilizes a lot of uh, newer technologies like machine learning and uh, digital twins as well, which I'm not so familiar with. So Michael's going to teach us about that a little bit today. Um, and we're going to learn about Fulfilled as well, which is a fairly new company as well, I believe. So, uh, Michael, welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you so much, Kevin. And staying warm here in Colorado, just snowed. Uh, excited to talk uh, software, excited to talk warehouses today. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, you're the chief technology officer, so you're the guy to talk about technology, right? <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Exactly. So tell us, uh, I guess you, you're the co-founder here at, at Fulfilled. So tell us a little bit about your background and, you know, kind of how you got to the point of, you know, Fulfilled is a, is a WMS. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong there, but I believe I read that correctly. And, uh, you know, how did you get to the point of wanting to start a, a WMS? What, what's your background like? Well, I think it, like most creators, they mm-hmm. create things because of, uh, of a frustration of something that didn't exist or exactly. doesn't exist. Yeah. And so my, my personal background, I, I come from supporting logistics and warehouse operations, specifically around ERP systems. So mm-hmm. I've worked with, with PeopleSoft, with JD Edwards, with SAP. Okay. And in working in and around these enterprise processing systems, you're typically supporting larger companies, companies mm-hmm. 200 million in revenue and above. We're working in these ERP systems and really saw a deficiency in the warehouse. Meaning, if I'm a warehouse worker, I very much have to know what to do in order to use the applications. Meaning I can't just walk up to the screen and figure out, how's, what's my day look like? How right. many picks am I going to work on? You know, you don't. You have to know what to work on in order to use the applications. The, a, the application is, is something you use as a means to an end. You use it to get something done, but you don't, you don't need it uh, per se to, to, to know what to do. Okay. So we thought, wow, there, there has to be a way to do this better. There has to be a way to inform the warehouse worker about their day and guide them through their day so that they're as efficient as possible with their time and their footsteps um, while also creating sort of more of a team-based concept. ERP systems operate in silos and and they assign picks to this person and to that person and those two picks shall never cross paths and and there's no team-based concepts. We wanted to create a new warehouse management platform and really we're trying to create a new platform. We call it a warehouse orchestration Okay. because I'm looking through you know, some of the other guests you've, you've had on the pod, mm-hmm. you know, we talk about robotics a lot and, and robotics in the warehouse and, and how do I orchestrate human beings and robotics in the warehouse so that we can coexist 
Uh, and there really hasn't or isn't uh, a warehouse management platform out there that does that. So that's why we, we we're creating fulfilled. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting to hear about your background as well. And uh, I love the initial point that you said that, you know, a lot of times we create things because of frustration. And that's like truly the, I guess, the continuous improvement, you know, kind of mindset is like, you know, fix fix what bothers you, right? So, um, yeah, and it's interesting too, you know, and I guess I never never thought about it in the way that you described is that, you know, you come in for the day and you really, you have to do some work to dig through these systems to really know like what's, what's ahead of you and what's, what's going on. So, so it sounds like you, you're trying to, I guess, streamline that process a little more and make it more, more accessible. Cause even I, I think about, you know, the situations where, you know, you have, um, you have people that do certain certain tasks within the warehouse and, you know, it, it involves running certain reports and, you know, there's certain nuances to that report. Um, and so, you know, maybe they're out one day and you have, you know, you have someone that's kind of their backup, but, you know, it's maybe there's something new that came up with the report and now you got to do something differently. Uh, it's not that easy to just walk up to it and do it like as you, as you mentioned. So, so yeah, so it really interesting um concept of what you guys have have come up with here with fulfilled um so i'm curious you know how initially did you know because you're the co-founder so i guess you you got together with uh yosh right is the that's right founder right um so how, how did you guys come together to to come up with this company so Yosh and I had worked together on a previous venture, and we grew okay. grew an organization to to about three hundred employees, supporting software development around ERP systems mm-hmm. and the SAP ecosystem. And so we found ourselves constantly building software in different parts of the warehouse for our customers. So when we had an opportunity to create a new company, we said, "All right, well, let's take everything we've learned over the last decade, where we mm-hmm. we built locations." Uh, uh, software to to understand location of people in a warehouse. Let's bring that in, and let's bring in machine learning in the warehouse and fit, and apply that here. So we wanted to build a new application based on our learnings and everything we've wanted to do, but maybe the customer didn't let us. Mm. And so we wanted to build a, a new a new a new class, a new a new enterprise warehouse management platform. So that, that's essentially how we got together. We 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 had been doing this kind of work over the last decade for different companies, different industries, manufacturing companies, aerospace and defense, chemicals, pharmaceuticals, mm. uh, you know, all these different industries, and we kept attacking the same challenge: uh, a bad user interface, right? Having to know how to use the UI, having to dig into it in order to know what to do, rather than just being able to get the work done. So, in our platform, we've we've built this sort of task and agenda based concept. So, mm. as a warehouse worker shows up in the beginning of the day. We know the deliveries that are coming into the building and what needs to be unloaded. And is that that material in that truck going to be cross docked, or is it going to be put away in a storage area, or does it need to be put into a staging area because there's other things you need to do to it? You need to break down the pallet. You need to add different things to it. And so we're orchestrating these employees' activities, and we've separated them into tasks so that any human being that can pick up a pick up an application like you know on the App Store and just pick up our our, our scanner and see their set of tasks laid out before them. Okay. And then if they're working on tasks and they need help, they can raise their hand and get help. And that's where we integrate sort of that team concept into warehouse management. Mm, yeah, very interesting. And it's interesting how you guys have taken all these different pieces. And you certainly, there's a lot of, I guess, uh, these industry 4.0, I guess, like, you know, buzzwords and things like that that are out there. And, you know, we have the one system that's doing machine learning and the other that's doing this and the AI and bringing all these different things. But, it's not all necessarily always in like one package, right? And you talk about the bringing the robotics in as well, um, and obviously orchestrating. And I, you know, I love, I love being able to, I guess, describe the warehouse as like a, like an orchestra because it, it really is like all to get the right sound, you know, quote unquote, um, out of the warehouse or you know get the job done. Like all the moving parts need to really flow together the right way just like an orchestra so so it's interesting that you you're looking at it in that aspect and and i wanted to ask you about the the, you mentioned the the team aspect in there um and somebody can raise their hand is that is that a system feature of raising the hand or is this like a like a physical raising of the hand no no well of course we all want to we should be raising our hand physically when we need help uh, more often but in in the application so Mm. Again, one of our differentiators is is our application uses ultra wideband to understand 
the size, scope, and scale, and location of people in your warehouse. Okay. So if I'm standing in an aisle and I'm doing my picks, and my teammate's standing in another aisle and she's working on her picks, the application knows where we are in, in proximity to each other mm-hmm. and, and knows the task that we're working on. Now let's say I have another colleague in another part of the warehouse and they're falling behind. Um, something wasn't where it was supposed to be, you know, uh, inventory's missing, things like that. So they're struggling on a specific task and now their task queue, the team's queue is kind of filling up. Well, now that person can say, hey, I can sort of raise a red flag on the application to say, I need help with my picks or I'm behind. Or even a manager in the, in the back office might, might be looking at the pick activity in the warehouse, seeing that someone's kind of lagging on their queue for one reason or another. And I, I, they might reassign those to another queue or to another team, right? Those are things that we can do. We're also mm-hmm. looking at deliveries. Delivery is going to show up at the dock two hours late. Well, that means this team's going to be over allocated because they're doing some other things yeah. at that time as well. Well, now we need to reallocate those tasks. So we use, we use information about the deliveries and the movements that we have in the system to inform and educate the, the warehouse worker to their day and to organize their activities. So they're as structured as, as, as efficient as possible. Mm-hmm. So rather than being order based first in first out, it's based on my proximity in the warehouse. These are the tasks I can work on and be most effective with my time and my footsteps or the tool that I'm working with, like a, like a power jack or a, or a forklift. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I like that concept. And, you know, I think that, you know, in my experience, um, as, as a warehouse manager, you know, obviously I've dealt with a few different, um, WMSs and ERP systems as well. And it's, you know, there, there is that difficult portion of trying to figure out at certain times, like how do you, how do you shift work and how do you do it? How do you do it effectively? And I think it even goes back to, you know, what you were saying in the beginning about, you know, the tasks not necessarily being easily accessible. Like sometimes you, sometimes you kind of realize maybe something is, you're not allocated correctly and, um, and it takes too much time to pull the data to be able to like really see what's going on and shift it around. So, so the fact that you're making it more visible and, and easier to do like that, I think is really a great thing. Um, and you mentioned something earlier too. You said, you said, uh, you said your hardware or your, um, your, uh, device, right? So are you guys developing your own hardware as well? So this is an area that we saw an opportunity for improvement. I mean, I think everybody here or any listener on your podcast Mm -hmm. would know, um, Zebra and Honeywell have really consolidated the mobile warehouse scanner market. You know, Intermac and Symbol are gone. Motorola has sold their business off. Or I think Motorola still does some stuff with tough books, but their primary scanners are gone. Honeywell has great de- some good devices, but a lot of times the, the devices that we're seeing from Honeywell and Zebra, they're not super innovative. You know, they're running two and three, four year old versions of Android. You're locked into buying the hardware from a single vendor, and then you have to buy security updates from Zebra. And so, hmm. here again, we want to flip this on its head, and, and number one, provide hardware as a subscription. So instead of buying yeah. software and then having a large capital upfront expenditure to buy hardware, you know, with fulfilled, you get hardware plus software in a single subscription. Number one, number two, mm-hmm. our devices using we've engineered essentially an assembly, a warehouse scanner that is powered by the Google Pixel Five and has the ability to mm-hmm. upgrade to the Google Pixel Six and Seven, etc. As Google releases the roadmaps and gives us those dimensions, we can it enhance. We'll have the it's it's physically engineered, mechanically engineered to support different device types but what's important about using a google pixel inside of a warehouse scanner is i get a lot of really cool stuff Mm. i get the ability to have a digital assistant we call him phil and fulfilled and you can say hey phil what's my next pick hey phil what tasks are we behind on Mm -hmm. and he'll respond to you and that's that's all part of our hardware and our hardware also has the ultra wideband tag and that's that location services capability Mm -hmm. the ability so when i'm carrying my warehouse scanner the tasks that show up on my scanner are organized based on my lo- like my location in the warehouse. So I, if I come off break and I pick up my scanner outside the break room, it's going to organize my upcoming tasks based on my physical proximity of where I'm standing. Hmm. And if I'm looking for more work and my team's got a queue, it's going to organize their tasks and display them to me based on where I'm standing. What can I grab real quick that I'm right next to rather than having to go to a terminal or to a printer mm-hmm. to go get a pick ticket? I can, I can look on my device and say, all right, I'm standing right here. What, what, what tasks need to be done in my proximity? Interesting, yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm a Pixel guy personally, actually, and I only have the Pixel three, so, so I guess I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta step it up a little bit here. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting that you're utilizing um, that technology, especially tech 
that's so much more advanced because like you mentioned you know a lot of times it is a couple of generations behind um and one thing you know i've talked about often on the show um with different solution providers it is you know it, there's really this migration i think of utilizing tech that people use in their personal life now like in the warehousing space and i think it makes a huge difference in the training of the employees and the familiarity and the comfortable comfort level that they have with um the tech because it's it's so much like you know what they're using all day long probably on their personal cell phone so so it's really interesting that you're, you're utilizing that um you know and along with that you guys are using you know i, I love and i love the name Phil, by the way, for the little uh, assistant <laughs> AI guy. Digital guy. assistant yeah, Phil. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it goes along good. So, um, you know, y- utilizing a lot of different technologies here. Um, and actually, my I think my Pixel heard me talking about it because it just came on with the assistant, to be honest with you, next to me here on the desk. Um, so you're utilizing a lot of technologies here. And, you know, one of them is, is the machine learning, right? So, uh, you know, you introduced an, an interesting concept um, when you're emailing um, about the machine learning versus the tribal knowledge and tribal knowledge in the warehouse has, in my experience has always been, it's always been a big thing. I tried to like standardize as much away from the tribal knowledge as possible, just because it's very hard when you get someone that's, that's super ingrained with the tribal knowledge, you know, has been there a long time is really rooted in all the processes and knows like all these nuances, like I mentioned earlier. Um, it's hard to like then transfer that knowledge to somebody else um, if something happens. Um, so tell me a little bit about the machine learning versus tribal knowledge. What, how does the machine learning have the ability to eventually or maybe right away um, pick up? Kind of those tribal knowledge things and those different nuances. Yeah, let's let's take a couple examples. You know, yeah. and I, you know, again, I, I come from the warehouse world where you know, in my early twenties, for for a period of years, worked in a warehouse for a manufacturing company, and you you do meet those people that have, that have worked there a long time. They're very passionate about their job. They love working in the warehouse, and they they say, well, we, you know, why do we store the material this material there? Mm-hmm. Because we always have. You know, that's where it goes. Mm. And it, you know, and they and they may not be thinking about. Well, you know what. This material is used seasonally, and if we moved it to a, to more of a dynamic storage location concept, we might be able to reduce our pick times. You know, if you reduce each pick by ten or fifteen seconds, that adds up when it's thousands or tens of thousands of picks. Oh, yeah. And so, this is where the machine learning and tribal knowledge come into play. We're using machine learning models. We're we're, we're making storage recommendations to the warehouse managers to say, all right, these are the materials that you have on order in the history, and this is the pick speed and the pick accuracy that you had. And if we move these materials from the back of the warehouse to the front, based on this upcoming seasonality that we're seeing, you could reduce your pick time by 10%, 20%. And as we all know in the warehouse, that, that that can mean a lot when you're saving, you know, seconds and then minutes and then that compounds into hours Mm -hmm. because ultimately it comes down to resources and people. And that's the other area of machine learning that we, we we built some machine learning models for is around staffing recommendations. You know, you as a warehouse manager, you talked about managing warehouses. How much staff do I need this week, next week and the month after? Um, You know, what type, what type of consent contingency should I have? I'm consistently planning for 15 warehouse employees, but on my historical trend, I'm averaging 13.5, you know, and those types of things. And using machine learning models, not just to understand that you, that your organization may have a, you know, we have a greeting card manufacturer that we support Mm -hmm. and Christmas cards start production in June, July and August. And then they, then they, they kind of go out and do through distribution channels. Well, we know that seasonality is coming. Let's provide recommendations to you based on what, what warehouse employees you might need rather than relying upon that person that's been there for 10, 15, 20 years who might retire, who might leave. And there might be some risk turnover. And then that tribal knowledge leaves with them. Let's leverage the data in the system to make these recommendations so we're not so dependent upon one specific individual that may not be there forever. Hmm. Yeah, very interesting. And I love the application of um, the labor because I think that's I think that's a huge thing. And, you know, like you said, there's this seasonality in our business and this like ebb and flow of, you know, when when do we need more people? And oftentimes, you know, you're getting 
told from the higher ups that like, well, you know, hold off a little bit, hold off a little bit on hiring. And then all of a sudden it's crazy. And they're like, well, you got to get more people in there get more people in there. It's like, well, you know, I'm trying to tell you. So it's better to, I guess, have a plan and be able to go off those data points. Um, then, you know, someone that's been there for a long time, is just like, oh, I know, you know, I usually need, you know, 20 more people or something. Um, so, I think I think that's really interesting, and I, I love the the concept, and that the technology is now kind of able to to help with that, um, because I think that is like a big, even though typically that person that holds like that tribal knowledge is like usually one of your your strongest assets because they know so many different facets right. of the operation. Having so much tribal knowledge is is a weak point, though, in your operation. Because if that one piece, you know, as whatever happens, like you said, retires, maybe leaves the company, or uh, even you know, during our recent times, you know, with the pandemic, like if that person gets COVID or something. I mean, you know, they're out. Um, they have to quarantine. You know, you kind of you kind of get lost a little bit. Um, so, so it's really important that you're able to to capture that. And oftentimes it's, it's hard to document that on your own. So the machine learning, I think is, is really, really helpful in the aspect of, uh, not only, I guess, capturing that, but then like generating the recommendations too, like you mentioned. So, so that's, that's pretty interesting. Um, now the other technology too, um, that caught my attention cause I, I can't say that I have heard this before. Um, you know, our, our discussion here is, is, uh, is digital twin, so what what is digital twin and how does it kind of apply to the warehouse environment and how are you guys using it in, in your application? We'll be back after a quick break. You hear a lot about supply chains these days because if the past couple years have taught us anything, it's that an efficient, well-managed supply chain is absolutely critical to keeping businesses successful and consumers happy. I'm Will Haywood and I host a podcast called All Business, No Boundaries, where we talk about supply chains, how they work, what happens when they don't, and the innovations that are redefining what's possible in the world of logistics. Join me for insightful interviews with thought leaders and industry experts. We discuss how optimizing supply chains can break down the barriers that are holding businesses back. That's All Business, No Boundaries by DHL Supply Chain. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. So for me, the, you know, digital twin was a, is a term that was coined you know, a decade ago, and it was, it's mm -hmm. part of the concept of Industry 4.0. And digital twin, I can best, uh, you know, uh, the way I best describe it to people is, is your Google, your Apple Home Assistant or your Google Home Assistant mm -hmm. understands your lights and your switches. That's a physical object in your home that has a digital representation. Okay. I have a button on my Google that I can turn on and off the light. And that's, a, that's a software representation of a physical object. Mm -hmm. So when talking about the digital twin in the warehouse, we're using ultra wideband technology to create a map, a digital map of your warehouse, of where your aisles are, of where the height of the aisles, your storage locations, and your equipment, your machinery, uh, your forklifts, power jacks, things like that, and of the people. I'm, uh, I'm a warehouse worker. I'm carrying a fulfilled device. Mm -hmm. I know the location of that device. Therefore, I know the location of, of Michael. And so as I'm walking around the round, I have a digital representation of Michael's activities in the warehouse. So that's, that's the digital twin. And what this enables us to do is if you think about, all right, well, you're, you're tracking Michael's movements other than just spying on Michael, what value is there? Well, <laughs> taken over, over a period of time, I can look at where in my warehouse have I had a lot of collisions where people just bump into each other or they are uh, potentially slowing each other down. Uh, mm. Uh, if I'm routing forklifts down an aisle to go do something, well, then I can't have my human, my people-based picker, pickers kind of going down that aisle as well for safety when they need to stay certain feet away. Mm. Or looking at robotics, you know, the RIA, the Robotics Industry Association, has set some rules with OSHA around the coexistence of humans and robots in the warehouse where when a human being comes within a certain amount of feet of a robot, the robot needs to stop work. Right okay. for humans, the effective robot needs to, to stop work when it when, when a human being comes out. Mm -hmm. So the digital twin is is that 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 representation of your warehouse in the digital space that will enables us to apply analytics, enables us to apply business rules, uh, enables us to provide signals to each other. Um, so for example, forklift is cruising down the warehouse, going down an aisle. There's two pickers that are about to head towards that aisle. We might reorganize their tasks so they don't 
mm-hmm. have a collision, so to speak, or run into that forklift or two forklifts running into each other unexpectedly. Right. You know, typically, you know, if we're, if we're a good mature warehouse, we have uh, ingress and egress from aisles defined. So forklifts never do run into each other, but it, it can happen. Right. And so creating that digital twin just enables us to be more sophisticated in that, that orchestra organizing the the delicate ballet of warehouse movements and, and people and, and machinery. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I had never, um, oh, you said it's a decade old. I guess I'm a little, a little data here on this, but yeah, I, I guess I had never heard that term. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm familiar with the concept of the smart home devices and all those things. And I have, you know, Philips Hue in my house and things like that. So, uh, but I didn't realize that was the term. So, so it's pretty interesting to, to apply that to the warehouse. And I think the, you know, kind of, uh, like spatial intelligence concept as well in the warehouse is really, is really an interesting concept because it, it really helps you kind of gain those perspectives, like you said, um, you know, of where are things happening a lot and giving you those actual data points of like, okay, there is a lot of traffic like here and what do I do about that? And even, even like you said, in a mature warehouse, you know, maybe you have these things mapped out and everything, but, um, maybe, you know, you didn't have this data collection point in, in the past. And now all of a sudden you're realizing like, oh, wow, my, my traffic in this area is really heavy actually. So maybe I need to change my egress or maybe I need to think differently about how my product is positioned in, in the racking or the locations because I'm have too many, um, fast moving items in this one spot. It's, it's getting too congested, like you said. Um, so it's really interesting. Um, and it's an interesting concept. So now talk to me a little bit more about like fulfilled itself. Cause it, it, you guys, it's fairly new, right? I see on the website, this is a wait list. So are, is it, is it launched right now? Or are you with like a couple test customers? I, I, you mentioned the greeting card customer. So. Yeah. So we, we do have uh, our first release of our software is actually at the end of this month. So it's, okay. it's, it's a busy month where we're heads down with uh, application testing, ensuring that we're not just uh, a basic warehouse management system, but mm-hmm. we are truly driving the value that we want to bring around digital twin machine learning and recommendations. Mm-hmm. So the first release is, is uh, April 1st is essentially the first release. That's to our beta customers. The beta period is is about ninety days for mm-hmm. those customers, and then our general release, so the the application that will be generally available for those not on the wait list but just are looking to purchase and implement the application, that's set for the June timeframe. Okay, uh, it's been a busy it's been a busy six months. Yeah, um, I, I can say that one thing that has enabled us to move so fast is a lot of the different cloud technologies we're leveraging. In that, and, and some of your listeners may want to know this, some may think this is you know, not needed for them, but we are what's called a serverless application. We, we mm-hmm. run in a cloud environment that is auto scaling. Right. So, the, you know, I think a lot of customers worry about, you know, the, the server sitting in the storeroom or the server room and doesn't have enough capacity to handle my warehouse and my, I'm adding three more warehouses. Does it have the capacity? Mm-hmm. We've built a cloud native application that's auto scaling. And so, what that means is, is much like Netflix, on Friday night grows to handle all the demand of people watching movies and then shrinks back down on Monday when nobody's watching movies or shouldn't be. Hmm. Same thing for us. Our application grows as the utilization is, is increases and then shrinks when demand is, is lower. So w- we've built a lot of flexibility in the application uh, that, that we think uh, customers are going to really re- be receptive about. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure it's uh, a lot has gone into it. It sounds like an, a, a lot of good, knowledge and like real experience too as well which i think is a really good thing you know the fact that you have have the warehouse experience and stuff i mean i think that goes a long way because oftentimes you know you see these solutions that are coming in to like the marketplace and you know i'm a a warehouse guy so you know i can pick up pretty quick if you're just a sales guy you know coming up with something right and you haven't like been out there you know to see what's really going on so so it's really good and i'm i'm interested to see see how it grows and see how it evolves you know you got to launch first which which sounds like it's close so you guys getting there so that's exciting um so i guess what once you guys uh get out there like in, in june you know what's what are the what are the plans for like the the next steps in the, in the future? Is, so the software and the hardware is going to be available at the same time. That's correct. So our our device that we're manufacturing mm-hmm. will be available with the June release. For the beta release, we're we're using a combination of technologies. But for the June release, our our hardware scanner will be available. The application will be available. 
In terms of future roadmaps, you know, we look to integrate. So right now we're, we're, we're building in machine learning for storage location recommendations and staffing recommendations. Okay. The next thing that we're going to be doing is building machine learning recommendations around how to pack pallets and, and, and getting for transport and, and pallet organization, um, optimizing further optimization of, of how people move through the warehouse. And then eventually the, the, the purpose of all of this, and, and we've got some great, we're, we're backed by some great um, uh, VCs in it to start as well. We've got a great, uh, good set of funding around around us right now, and looking to add true artificial intelligence. So, mm-hmm. so machine learning is making recommendations, and then you, as the as a warehouse manager, are going to accept those. When we move to the realm of true AI, uh, our AI is, it will help or, or help make those decisions for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, looking for those signals where a certain group of tasks assigned to a team or delayed in this team. Is has capacity, the AI will actually move the tasks over and it, it'll be more of an informational message for you as the warehouse manager rather than it's seeking your approval. So machine learning is about making recommendations mm. and you can choose to accept or deny those. We want to evolve into true AI enabling us to have the system interact on its own with the orders, pickings, deliveries that are happening in the warehouse so that the warehouse manager is truly only managing by exception. Mm, very interesting, and, and I love the actually the, the breakdown there of machine learning versus AI. That's pretty. That's probably the maybe the simplest explanation I, I've heard of the difference uh, in my my experience. So, I, so I really appreciate that. Actually, that's a good nugget there. Um, yeah. So it, it'll be interesting to see how you guys grow, and I, I and I think the great thing too about you guys is, is since you're cloud based, as you're working on these these things, like I'm, I'm sure the customer will just get updates like pushed out to them, right? And and that's that's one of the pain points we're trying to solve from an mm-hmm. IT perspective. You know, we were on the phone with a customer today, and he said we haven't upgraded uh, our our WMM system in four years. It's this, you know, mm-hmm. they're paying software maintenance today for a four year old piece of uh, four year old application. Right. With our with being cloud cloud native and being multi tenant in the cloud, we're able to push updates to the customer's tenants, the customer mm-hmm. environment uh, on a quarterly basis. And then they can choose to enable or disable those innovations because they're available to them. Okay. They don't necessarily need to impact all of their operations to yeah. do so. Yeah, very interesting. I think that's uh, that kind of echoes, you know, what we talked about like earlier in our discussion. You know, where kind of the, the consumer world of what we're doing in our personal life is evolving into the, the industrial world as well, because you know, just like you know, we get updates on our phone for apps and things like that, and you know, we can take them, not take them. Sometimes the app is like you got to take it, or you can't use the app anymore. Um, but exactly, yeah. So I mean, it, I think it's just the way of the future, and it sounds like you know, you guys are, you guys are helping to uh, bring the future into the now. So, so it's really a cool thing. So, so Michael, you know, I appreciate you coming on the show um, a lot and, and talking to me about fulfill. It's really interesting to learn about, it and I'm I'm excited to see how the launch goes and all those different things. So, so we talked about the wait list and. You know, if people are interested in, in learning more about Fulfilled and getting on the wait list, how can they do that? Absolutely. So they can uh, head, head over to our site, fulfilled.io. That's F-U-L-F-I-L-L-D.io. Uh, my, my co-founder and I have a habit of not using the, 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 the vowel E in any of our names. Oh, uh, so it's okay. fulfilled, F-U-L-F-I-L-L-D. F-I-L-L-D dot I-O to, to learn more. Obviously here on the pod, uh, I'm sure when they're watching this uh, on the website, we could also put our information out there to, for contact. Okay, great. Yeah, and we'll definitely put all that information on the new warehouse.com. Um, but and just for reference, Michael does spell his name with an E, so I don't I don't know where that came from. But. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, and I I guess oh, one one final question for you actually. You know, since you guys are um, are fairly new and getting ready to launch, you know, when people are listening to this and maybe they're they're intrigued and they're thinking about you know switching their WMS and exploring different WMS, you know, what what's really the the ideal customer fit for your application? So right now, our application is is built upon the, the the premise that you have an ERP system today. You're running NetSuite, you're running Oracle, SAP, N4, Microsoft Dynamics, or an NAV. You have an ERP system, and that ERP system isn't providing the warehouse support that you need in that it's not sophisticated enough. Or maybe you run a JDA, a Manhattan, a high jump today, 
Mm. And, and it's a, it hasn't been upgraded in multiple years and, and you want to move to something that's cloud-based to decrease your IT costs. So that that's our target customer. If you're a manufacturer, a wholesale distributor, a third-party logistics provider, and, and you're using an ERP system today, we float right over the top of the ERP system. We're, we're a Microsoft partner, SAP partner. We're adding mm. Oracle and Infor shortly. And the way that our, our, our go live works is we actually have hooks pre-built into SAP and Microsoft to read the data in that we need. Mm. We enhance it through some, through some wizards that we walk you through in order to convert to our platform. But really you, you're going to spend less time, you know, manually putting data in Excel to upload to us. We, we read from the ERP system directly uh, in order to re- bring that information in very quickly. So you can start using our WMS uh, uh, in, a, in a shorter period of time than compared to other WMS platforms. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, good to know, definitely. And uh, hopefully some people will, that are listening will be uh, a fit for that and, and head over to your website. So, so Michael, thank you very much for coming on the show and uh, giving us some time today. And I uh, really appreciate it. We'll put more information about Fulfilled on the new warehouse.com. So thank you again. Thank you, Kevin. Always enjoy the pod. Talk soon. You've been listening to the New Warehouse Podcast with Kevin Lawton. Subscribe and check us out online at thenewwarehouse.com. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want more content from The New Warehouse, check out our new video series called All Hands on LinkedIn. Just search for The New Warehouse on LinkedIn and follow along.